Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton, and this is our beautiful Earth that's about to change a little bit. Anyway, we've actually done quite a lot of CO2 experiments, and we've talked about various changes that our Earth can um, go through if the CO2 levels or carbon dioxide levels on our planet change. But I didn't really explain to you how this whole CO2 things work. In other words, how do greenhouses work? How do green, uh, greenhouses actually make our planet so hot? And what exactly happens on the uh, molecular level to change the planet into this? In today's video, you're going to find out. And anyway, welcome to What The Mad. So in this particular video, I'm actually going to be using uh, not Universe Sandbox, but I'm going to use one of these simulations from this amazing website called PHET that I've used for years and years and years, even during um, my teaching years. And uh, just for fun, I actually learned a lot of stuff using those simulations that I'm going to show you in a second. But let's actually explore our Earth as it heats up with tremendous amounts of greenhouse gases that I've placed on it. And as basically everything on it evaporates and turns very, very hot. We're gonna come back to this earth in a few minutes and see what actually happened here after a few uh, months have passed. Anyway, so let's uh, move to the uh, PHET simulation, which actually looks really, really simple. It's a very simple simulation made in JavaScript. And uh, these things have been around for many years. It's made by the University of Colorado, I believe. And all of the links for this software is actually in the description below. You can check it out by yourself. You can play with them. There's quite a lot of them. Uh, I'm going to cover some of the other ones in, in the future videos. But for now, we're going to be using the Greenhouse Effect Simulation, version 3.04. Anyway, let's start with the actual Greenhouse Effect here. And you can see there's two things happening. There's solar radiation coming in. There's a little satellite here. And then there is an infrared, uh, infrared radiation uh, being emitted out of the planet. Uh, it kind of is very simplified. You can actually see a lot more of them if you press this button. This gives you an idea that there's quite a lot of um, radiation coming in, coming out. But um, this is in using today's atmospheric sort of parameters with about 70% uh, relative humidity, uh, CO2 levels of about 388 ppm. This is actually below today's levels. Today's level uh, currently stands at, well, let's actually check. According to CO2.Earth, the current level is actually 406.4. This is a February 2017, and it does keep going up, so there's that as well. So these are old values we're looking at. And there's also a bit of other elements like um, N2O and uh, CHO4, which is the methane and uh, nitrogen oxide. So these elements also adapt to the greenhouse effect, and basically they will kind of warm up the planet. Um, I'm going to change this to Celsius. So this is about 16 degrees, 15 degrees Celsius on average. Uh, we can actually change these levels to like 1750s, the pre-industrial era, and you'll see that the temperature will actually decrease a little bit because the CO2 levels are slightly lower and everything else will actually be a little bit lower as well. Or we can even go further into the ice age here and the levels will actually drop dramatically. Or you can actually adjust this yourself and basically increase the greenhouse gases and see how hot it gets. Uh, the level of seal will suddenly start increasing. Now, we've done all of this using Universe Sandbox, and we know that obviously temperature changes. Today, we're actually going to talk about the reasons why. Um, so, there's two more simulations here. One is called glass layer, and one is photon absorption. So, basically, what exactly is happening here? Uh, we can actually add some clouds just for fun as well. I believe these, these do change both the absorption and uh, re reflection levels as well. Uh, so, first of all, glass layers. These actually give you an analogy of uh, various greenhouse uh, gases. So, we have at least uh, three gases we've looked at. Uh, so, we can actually place three different glass play panes that represent each gas. So, for example, this will be CO2, this will be H2O, or um, water gases, and this will be methane gas. All, all of those are relatively strong greenhouse gases. And you can see that... Um, Basically, it's kind of like being reflected by a glass pane. So um, the radiation that tries to escape Earth gets reflected from these invisible ga um, glass panes and comes back to, to Earth. And this is why this effect is often referred to as the greenhouse uh, gas effect, because basically it's like a reflection. And even if we just had one of them, like CO2, for example, you'd see that uh, even with just one glass pane, there's quite a lot of reflection in going on, and the temperatures are still going to be pretty high. 
they're not going to be as low as if there were no greenhouse gases at all which means that the temperature would actually drop dramatically because without greenhouse gas at all the temperature on earth would be very very low so we need to have some greenhouse gases now what exactly is happening here on the actual atomic level so there's a photon absorption um, simulation here that kind of gives you an idea there's um, six or actually five different gases um, oxygen nitrogen which is the most prominent gas in our atmosphere there's also water co2 and methane these three are very potent um, very very potent uh, in terms of greenhouse uh, gas effect so we're going to start with the most prominent gas uh, nitrogen there's about you know 70 percent over 70 percent of the stuff in our atmosphere and what we're going to do is we're going to start bombarding it with visible light and see what happens well, nothing really happens. How about infrared pho photons? These are basically um, heat radiation. Nothing happens again. Okay, so when Earth reflects light, it goes through nitrogen. When a sun sends us radiation, it also goes through nitrogen. Nothing happens. How about oxygen? About 21% of our atmosphere is oxygen. Um, and as you can see, it doesn't really do anything so in other words both infrared photons infrared radiation and also visible radiation goes through oxygen just fine however if i suddenly change this to co2 you'll notice that it starts vibrating that's because it actually gets affected by infrared photons now this this gets really interesting so first of all you can see that it doesn't always uh, throw away the radiation into the same direction. It's always different. Sometimes it goes this way, sometimes it goes that way, and sometimes it goes out into the atmosphere. So there's a big chance that even if something hits the greenhouse gas like CO2, in, in other words, if the infrared radiation hits the gas, it might still get actually sent out into space. But there's also a chance that it goes back to Earth. So if I do this over and over again, you'll see that there's always a chance that some of it will come back and some of it will go away. Visible light, however, goes through CO2 just fine, which suggests that, if I go back here, visible light will not be affected by CO2, but the infrared light that tries to escape Earth will be affected by CO2. It might actually get reabsorbed. Okay, so that's CO2. Uh, once again, this is what it looks like. How about methane? Methane molecule does the same thing. As a matter of fact, it does it more frequently than CO2. So methane molecule is actually a lot more effective at this whole reabsorption and re-reflection than CO2 molecule. And water molecule is even more effective. It's super, super effective at, at doing this. So these three molecules are very, very efficient at uh, essentially absorbing infrared radiation and then re-releasing it into a completely different direction, depending on a lot of factors that we're not going to cover in this video. And so what we can do now is, is we can actually build our um, custom atmosphere. So let's, let me just reset this. We're going to build our own atmosphere. So let's add maybe a little bit of um, oxygen. So we'll have like two molecules of oxygen, seven molecules of nitrogen because there's a lot more nitrogen. And let's just put like one of each of these and then see what happens. So this is the uh, simulation of greenhouse um, gases in our atmosphere. So as you can see, the visible light goes through all of these molecules just fine. But the uh, infrared light that's going to be emitted by our planet gets stopped by some of them. As a matter of fact, uh, a lot of it will actually get sent back to Earth. And if I add more of these molecules here, you'll see that it will ha start happening a lot more often. So the more greenhouse gas there is in the atmosphere, the more often this will start uh, happening. So at this point, if I have like a lot of molecules, you'll see that most of the infrared light will actually return back to Earth. And so if I actually put like nine molecules of everything, all of the greenhouse gases, there's barely going to be anything escaping. So a lot of the stuff will actually get uh, returned to Earth and most of it will probably stay and heat up our planet to the point where it's going to be really, really toasty. Kind of like if I were to place three glass panes and the temperature was suddenly jumped to like close to 100 degrees Celsius, which is basically the uh, temperature at which water turns into gas. So it's going to get really, really hot here really, really quick. 
And if I were actually go in here and do the same, give lots and lots of um, different gases here, the temperature will go up to at least 20 degrees Celsius, which is already high enough for us to melt quite a lot of ice on our planet Earth and increase um, greenhouse levels even more. So as you can see in glass paint simulation, the temperature is now close to about 80 degrees Celsius. So it does get pretty hot. Now, if we actually look at our planet Earth that we were simulating before, um, things here don't look too good. All of the water actually has evaporated and I made my planet a little bit too hot because I basically overdosed on those greenhouse gases essentially turning planet Earth similar to planets like Venus that does have a tremendously powerful greenhouse effect on its surface. And so hopefully you learn something from this video and hopefully now you know a little bit more about uh, greenhouse gases and essentially how on the molecular level they actually absorb the infrared light and how they can then re-emit it back to Earth and why, um, you know, having greenhouse gases in our atmosphere is sort of uh, important to keep track of because if there's too much stuff in the atmosphere that reabsorbs the, uh, the the infrared light that's emitted from the surface of our planet, in other words, the heat that's trying to escape, you know, it's gonna get too toasty here and at some point we're gonna have to move somewhere else and right now we don't really have that many options. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, check out the simulation by yourself on uh, FET website and come back here tomorrow to learn something else, something interesting, something that you might enjoy as well. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. And I'm gonna go back to my planet Earth and just for fun, make it unbearably hot even more. By essentially um, placing it a little bit too close to the sun. Let's see how long all of this lasts on our planet Earth and let's see what becomes of it in a few seconds. And here we go. Three, two, one. Boom. The Earth is now on fire. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye bye.